Hi, this is Sudan Bharti and this special edition of Dear Fire Insight. We have with us today Ms. Ka Kaipian, your Senior Director of Engineering at Mirantis. Ms. Ka, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Tell me a bit about Lens. Lens, first of all, it's a tool for all the people who are working with Kubernetes clusters on a daily basis to make their life easier. So basically providing the complete uh, situational awareness across all their clusters and workloads that they are running. No matter wh- where those workloads are, uh, they can be in hybrid cloud environments, on-prem, on, on public cloud. So, so Lens is a tool that basically brings all this information uh, together and makes it very easy for users to understand uh, what's going on in their networks, uh, in their clusters. Uh, we started uh, the work around Lens in uh, 2017. Actually, it's quite some time ago. Uh, we felt that with, uh, with the introduction of all new technologies uh, like container orchestration in general, uh, those are very complex topics. And uh, quite often in the beginning, the development is focusing very much on the core technologies themselves. Uh, but uh, but uh, nobody's maybe putting too much attention on on how to visualize things and and how to make it so that uh, that it's more easy to understand for for some uh, normal developers, for example. So we started the development of Lens uh, in the very early days with the one single focus of trying to make developers happy while they are working with this uh, uh, latest and greatest technologies that are currently uh, in the development. And uh, then Kubernetes was becoming very popular. So actually we transformed Lens to become uh, supporting for Kubernetes. And uh, in its current shape, where Lens is uh, a kind of standalone desktop application, uh, we started that basically around uh, more than one year ago when we realized that actually our target users for Lens, they are really the developers, the end users, and they don't necessarily always have access to the, to the clusters uh, so that they could install some web-based uh, monitoring tool, for example. So then we decided that, okay, Lens needs to become a standalone native desktop application that can talk with any Kubernetes clusters. And uh, yeah, since then, it's been great. Uh, Lens, we open sourced the project in March. And uh, since then, we have been getting like 7,000 stargazers in just five months, which is amazing. Uh, kind of clearly shows that there is a demand for for something like uh, the tool like Lens. Can you talk a bit about some of the core features and functionalities of Lens? Lens is able to connect all your clusters. So, so Typically, developers, they, they, they have multiple clusters that they are working with. Uh, they have their local Minikube, for example, and then they might have clusters uh, in their on-prem environments, and uh, they might have clusters on the public clouds and for different purposes also. They might have clusters for production, for staging, uh, for testing, etc. So... One of the features of Lens is, of course, that it can bring all these clusters together and make it very fast for a developer to switch between those clusters. Uh, another thing that is important is that whenever the clusters are switched uh, and uh, no matter where the user is navigating around where, while using this tool, uh, the user is never losing the context on, on what he's uh, working on. So, for example, when the user is opening a terminal session uh, from Lens, so when he's doing uh, very common commands like uh, kubectl, get ports, uh, for example, so that command will always kind of is reflected to the to the cluster that he's currently seeing and, and that is currently visualized in front of his eyes. So, so those type of keeping everything in context is one of uh, is another key feature. It also has uh, built-in support for Prometheus uh, that is kind of becoming almost like a standard for for um, for gathering the statistics and metrics data, and uh, users can very easily see the statistics of all their ports, services, deployments, 
uh, the network, uh, ingress, egress, and uh, many, many other things uh, without need to configure individual uh, views for, for all of this. So it's all done automatically by the tool. And if you talk, look at some of these features and some things that you're supporting, there are a lot of other projects that do that too. So why why would or why should somebody you know look at Lens? Lens is solving maybe let's let's say twenty different problems, and uh, that's correct that there are tools uh, for these twenty different problems. Uh, but usually, what happens is that what you end up having is that you will then need to use 20 different tools. So you have one tool for one single purpose. And that's a nightmare, actually. Uh, you are losing context all the time when you are looking, uh, when you are trying to work. Uh, it's not easy to drill down to information uh, and, and those type of things. So with Lens, we are basically bringing all of these core functionality together and making it kind of uh, usable as a one single easy to use tool uh, and technology. That does make sense. It also simplifies it for users also that you do, they don't have to. Because if you look at uh, CNCF landscape, there are so many projects. Uh, right. So uh, how does Lens complement Kubernetes? If we think about Kubernetes as a kind of, uh, as a kind of movement, you know, so actually we can we can fuel this movement, this uh, this the apex of of uh, DevOps, uh, let's say, uh, by by making Kubernetes more easy and lowering the barrier of entry for new developers and uh, and DevOps like of people who want to learn Kubernetes and who want to start playing around with Kubernetes because Lens is a very nice tool for also new people to start exploring what is possible and what is not and how does it work you know if i tweak this parameter so how how does it actually work uh, how does my work let's get uh, workloads get scaled up or down and and those type of things so i think we can actually accelerate the adoption of kubernetes and at the same time make it more easy for for the current users. You built a great tool, which you know, is solving a lot of problems for the, for the ecosystem community. Then you were acquired by uh, Mirantis. Talk about why did you feel that Mirantis was right home for Lens or, you know, or company? At the same time, how do you, you know, kind of you know, help or complement each other's users? Or in the, in, the, in the wider picture, the whole ecosystem? When we joined Mirantis, so so we felt actually Mirantis was a kind of perfect home for us, uh, for the team, and also uh, given the background and the technology that we had developed. So because we could keep on keep on working uh, with the with the technology that we love, and we felt that uh, Mirantis is in an excellent position in this uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. It's hungry. Mirantis is very hungry uh, to grow and to find kind of new, unique kind of perspectives on how, how to how to make life easier for the developers, for example. So we felt that our kind of mindsets with Mirantis vision uh, they matched up very well, and and it felt very natural to us. How do you kind of uh, help each other? You know, Mirantis helps. You know, kind of. You know, Lens customers and you know your team helps Mirantis customers, or in general, uh, combined you help the whole ecosystem. As together, I don't see actually there being si- kind of silos. So I think we have been meshing up quite well uh, within Mirantis. So, so we are most of us are aware of of Lens and and uh, we are trying to you know explain it to to our users that you might find Lens being helpful. Uh, in your in your kind of workflows also, and please take a look. So I think, yeah, Mirantis is trying to help the whole ecosystem. We are trying to help within Mirantis, of course, and and uh, and personally, I'm still very active uh, with the Lens development community, and uh, we had there also some other people, uh, 
not employed even by Mirandis who are spreading the word. So You open source Lens at one point. What is the long-term plan for Lens? Do you plan to keep it at Mirantis as an open source project? Do you want to put it in a neater foundation? Can you talk about that? So there has been some talk uh, about uh, putting it into some foundations. Of course, we would like to see the type of what would be the benefit for the ecosystem or if there is a benefit, a kind of greater benefit coming out from that. So personally, at least, I'm not I'm not against it. I'm not, of course, speaking of, from behalf of Mirandis, but uh, as a founder of this project. Uh, so I'm not against that idea. Uh, the long-term vision for Lens is that we want to make sure that Lens is the best tool for anybody who wants to work on Kubernetes. So the de facto tool, no questions asked, like almost like Visual Studio Code for, for software developers almost. Uh, so being de facto tool for software develop, uh, for people working with Kubernetes, the big new features that we will be adding uh, before end of this year, uh, we, we are having a goal for Q3. So by end of September to have the extensions API. Uh, which would allow third parties and technology vendors in the cloud native landscape uh, and ecosystem to write their own plugins to Lens uh, and to basically plug in directly uh, to the Lens UI to visualize their own technology stacks. And uh, that's going to be quite quite nice feature. You will be at the KubeCon, so what can users expect uh, to see at KubeCon from Lens perspective? Of course, we will have a couple of demos there and uh, we will have uh, the key, let's say the core developers are available also. So if you want to chat with uh, with uh, one of the core developers, I will be there also myself. Uh, so if you want to talk more about, for example, the future of Lens and the potential integration paths, uh, how we could integrate with uh, different technologies or or to some enterprise uh, architecture. So so we are very happy to talk about and discuss about those ideas. As we were talking earlier, you were saying, you know, Lens is doing a lot of things. How do you see the evolution of Lens? Because <laughs> as the use cases increases and as part of Mirantes, you will explore new new use cases. Do you have kind of a roadmap where you're looking at those different kind of problems that you want to solve and that way Lens will continue to evolve and grow? Since this is an open source project, so our roadmap is is totally public. So it's on, on GitHub. Anybody can go and take a look at the roadmap. And uh, of course, at the moment, the roadmap is aligned uh, based on the on the feedback coming from from our users. Uh, and from the community. And now, of course, uh, together with Mirandis, so we need to also think about that. How do we, how do we ensure that there is a compatibility uh, with Mirandis com- commercial offering? Uh, so we will be working on, on features that w- will also make it possible to use this product better with, uh, with a Mirandis uh, commercial offering. And what kind of community is there around Lens? You know, because there are end users who use, there are, you know, of course, creators like you, and then there are also uh, other vendors who are also commercializing it. So can you talk about the community around Lens? Of course, majority of the users are just, uh, you know, end users. They just go to our website, they download the tool, and uh, and uh, they keep on using the tool. Uh, so that's, of course, majority of the users. Uh, then we have uh, the community on Slack. Uh, number of people are joining to our Slack channel and uh, they are having discussions in there. Most likely they are, they are posting their questions because uh, we don't have maybe too much documentation uh, so they are asking questions on Slack channel. Uh, and uh, of course, we have on GitHub, uh, all the issues are posted on GitHub. So so there we have very active uh, community where also other users uh, are trying to help people with their issues. Um, so at the moment, we have not been too much engaging with, uh, with the technology vendors, uh, 
and we are now basically getting into there uh, with the introduction of the of the extensions that will allow much more easier way for these technology vendors uh, to work uh, in this project. So for them being able to write their own plugins to Lens. So that that's something that we will start doing next. Um, Scott, thank you so much for talking to me today about Lens. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Okay, thank you.